Hello class, uh, I received a question uh, about number 9 and I think 13 from the uh, module 4 practice exam. So let's take a look. Uh, it looks like we are given uh, the weight in grams of a random sample of 13 medicine tablets and we're asked to find the five number summary and we're also asked to construct the box plot. So here is the data. So if we click this little table to the right, we can open this up in StatCrunch. And here's my data. A couple of things I want to do. Uh, when we're getting our five number summary, I need the minimum value and the maximum value. I need the median and Q1 and Q3. Um, so maybe it would be helpful to sort this data. Uh, so if I select data, sort, uh, let's see, select columns, variable one, uh, select variable one. So we'll replace the current column with our new data, sorted. And here we go, right? Smallest to highest. So right away, I can enter um, the 0.598 and the 0.612 into our boxes over here. So let's do that. And the maximum was 0.612. And then we also need the median. So there's an easy way to get the median in Q1 and Q2. Take a look at this. If I press stat, summary statistics, uh, from our column, right, the VAR1 column, you can see I can get the mean, the variance, standard deviation, Q1, Q3. There's other things I can get as well, but this should do it. I press compute. So the median is 0 0.605. So in the middle here, I put in 0 0.605. And then remember Q1, let's see if we have that. Here it is. Q1 is 0 0.602, 0 0.602. And then the last thing we need is Q3. Q3 is 0 0.608, 0 0.608. Okay, so that's my five number summary. And then we're asked to construct the box plot. So, okay, we can go back to StatCrunch, press graph, box plot. Again, our data is in variable one. Uh, let's draw the boxes horizontally. Uh, generally, StatCrunch does them left, uh, up and down vertically. But looking at your pictures here, these boxes are all going horizontally or drawn horizontally. What else can we do? Uh, maybe I'll see a line for the median. Um, and I think that is it. If there's anything else I want to add to it. Um, so I'm going to press compute. And here is my box plot. So let's see, what does that look like? Right? If you look, my median is kind of right through the middle of my box. So A is out. Letter C is out. Letter B is my choice. So I select letter B. Next, we're asked to comment on the shape of the distribution. So letter A to me looks like this would be skewed to the left because we have outliers on the left. Letter C would be skewed to the right because we have outliers on the, on the right. But letter B seems to be uh, symmetrical. So I'm going to check letter C. And then I am going to press check answer. And look at that, 100%. That's what I like to see. So that's question number nine. Number 13, let's take a peek. So we have a college surveying, 20 people, and it looks like there's trying to figure out a relationship between the number of hours playing a video game and grade point average. Um, so the first thing we're asked to do is predict the grade point average for someone who plays eight hours per week. So we were to place X with eight to calculate our Y. All right, so let's see if I can find my graphing calculator somewhere. Here we go. And I'm going to type, oops, lost it. I'm going to type this equation into my calculator. Negative, looks like 0 0.0512. And then instead of X, I'm going to put in, uh, it did say, I think it was eight hours. Yeah, here it is. Here's the eight. So I'll put in the eight for my x plus 
I press enter. So it looks like someone who plays eight hours of video games, according to my model, has a 2.5 GPA. So I'll put in 2.5. Now it says interpret the slope. So remember, the slope is uh, delta Y over delta X, or the change in Y. So the change in your grade point average over the change in the number of hours of video games being played. Right? So if my slope is this negative 0.0512, uh, we could say that each time we increase the number of hours playing the video games, my average will fall by, um, oh, wait a minute, my average will decrease because of the negative sign, right? This was positive, would increase. It will in, uh, decrease by 0 0.0512 points on average. That's what the slope represents. And the y-intercept would be, well, if you play zero hours, right, to find the y-intercept, you sub in zero for x, solve for y. Um, so someone who plays zero hours has a 2.9 GPA. Right? Uh, who does not play, right? Zero hours of video games would be 2.914. Okay. And then the last one, so someone plays seven hours. So let's see what seven hours should look like. Um, I'm going to replace that eight with a seven. And someone that plays seven hours should have a 2.55 GPA. And this is saying this person has a 2.6. So this person's GPA is above the average, right? Because right? according to our model, the average should be 2.55. This person has a 2.6, so they're above the average. Let's check our work. 100%. Well done. Thank you for watching.